So, guys, uh, this is the network of arteries in the abdominal cavity. This is a 3D picture of it. And this highlights uh, the complicity, uh, complexity of uh, this network, what uh, we have to deal with in the operating theater. And uh, that's going to be your task as well in the future if you are becoming a surgeon. Uh, or if you are not a surgeon, but if you are a radiologist, you should be interested in this uh, field, internal medical specialist, urologist. Uh, um, this is uh, utmost importance uh, that you have uh, the anatomical knowledge. Uh, I will go through uh, some basic knowledge in the beginning, then um, specifically uh, according to the organs, I will highlight uh, their anatomical uh, uh, specialty how they how they have their blood supply and after this uh, the clinical importance will follow so this is just a brief summary what you probably already know that uh, the abdominal aorta uh, is uh, coming through the diaphragma and then it's uh, divided in two uh, sides the left and the uh, right uh, common iliac arteries there are some unpaired viscera branches of the aorta, and there are some paired viscera branches. The paired viscera branches are going to the uh, abdominal wall, the kidneys, urinary bladder, and the extra abdominal organs. Uh, I won't uh, deal with this in this uh, lecture. I will focus uh, on the abdominal organs and the unpaired uh, branches of the aorta. Uh, these are the celiac trunk which are divided in three branches, the uh, left gastric artery, the uh, leonalis, and the uh, common hepatic artery. Then the superior mesenteric and the inferior mesenteric artery, we will go uh, through those uh, in details. The unpaired branches, of course, are listed on this uh, slide, but uh, as I said, I won't uh, go in detail with those. Uh, this is one important picture at the beginning. Uh, this is uh, first to highlight how it is on the anatomical book, which is in the left picture, uh, numbered with one. This is what you find in the anatomic books. And uh, on the right, uh, even on the left, of course, you can find it uh, sometimes in uh, some patients which are, uh, which pro who probably studied anatomy as well but uh, on the right side uh, these pictures from two to five are some variations you have to uh, somehow uh, sometimes face those anatomical variations during uh, surgery and if you uh, uh, imagine how we are doing a surgery patient is lying on the back and you have to go deep down to to the aorta it's sometimes a, a 30 centimeter depth from the skin, and uh, you have to be uh, absolutely uh, certain about the uh, directions of the arteries, because it's absolutely uh, very important that you ligate, you close the, the vessel, the artery you want to close, and um, uh, that's why you have to be really 100% sure what you are facing. And during a surgery, you always have to clear the branches in which direction they go. And uh, uh, this, uh, the right side of this picture uh, shows the complexity of this task. I'll go through the different organs, uh, as I already said, and uh, tell the blood supply of them. And in this row, we start with uh, the stomach. The stomach, is a muscular, muscular uh, organ which uh, uh, works after uh, the meals and it needs a lot of uh, blood uh, for its function. Uh, to reach the goal, uh, it has a perfect blood supply from four different directions. Uh, in the uh, smaller curvature, the greater curvature uh, from two sides, the left and the right side, as the, uh, the left gastric artery, the right gastric artery, the left uh, gastroepiploic artery, and the right one. So it has a massive uh, blood supply, which is very good on one side because uh, uh, a stomach 
operation here is usually quite well uh, if uh, we have to open it uh, from some reason. But on the other hand, during surgery, it can lead to complications uh, because uh, the stomach itself can bleed uh, quite heavily. Uh, during a surgery, it's uh, not uh, life-threatening, but uh, if you have some complication in the stomach, some uh, diseases, you have to face this uh, massive uh, blood supply. Uh, in this picture, in the middle, you see a so-called gastric ulcer when the protective uh, measures in the stomach are not working well and uh, the highly uh, acidic surrounding in uh, fluids in the stomach uh, can eat away the muscle uh, wall of the stomach and uh, causing the so-called ulcer. This, uh, uh, this mine or this hole in the side of the stomach can uh, lead to a so-called perforation when the whole wall of the stomach is opened. And uh, if uh, this acidic uh, uh, problem can reach or reaches an artery, it can lead to a massive, uh, sometimes life-threatening bleeding as well. On the left side of the picture, uh, named with the perforation, you see uh, if this uh, hole on the side of the stomach uh, releases gases into the uh, free abdominal cavity. Uh, with the whitish arrow, you see the diaphragma, and uh, with the blackish, you see the upper uh, part of the liver, and in between, you have so called free air uh, in the abdominal cavity, which is an absolute indication for surgery. These patients are dying if you don't do a surgery and don't close. Uh, this uh, tiny hole, tiny window on the side of the stomach. On the right, uh, very right picture, you see uh, that um, if you uh, ask the patient to drink a so-called contrast material, which is a soluble uh, uh, thing, which can uh, uh, show you some uh, uh, strange uh, shadows in the inside of the stomach. In particular, on, uh, on this picture, there is a tumor shown with this uh, blackish arrow. Uh, so if we surgeons are having uh, uh, an operation with the stomach, on the left side, uh, if we have a bleeding, uh, that's, a, that's a condition which is uh, shown on the left side, you have to open the, the stomach, in particular on this picture, there is a pyloric area where we make a cut and we have to sew the bleeding, which is, uh, which is usually in the posterior wall of the stomach. But if uh, there is a hole on the artery, you still have to prepare everything um, like uh, in the anatomic books and make several ligations of those uh, bleeding arteries because that's the way you can uh, avoid further life-threatening bleeding by the patient. In the middle picture, right in the middle with this uh, bluish shadow uh, is a condition which uh, shows uh, a small gastric tumor uh, with this reddish spot. And uh, because of this uh, highly, uh, so, uh, very good network of uh, arteries, uh, we always have to deal uh, with a possible uh, metastasis in the wall of the stomach. So because of this uh, very good vasculature in the, uh, in the muscle of the stomach, you have to cut away plenty of uh, uh, good looking or healthy looking uh, stomach as well uh, in the side of the tumor. In particular, in the stomach, we have to cut away six, six centimeter proximally and distally to the tumor uh, to avoid the uh, metastasis uh, in the wall of the stomach. The reconstruction, the actually, which are shown with those uh, blackish arrows in the middle, uh, 
with the letter A, you see a build route one reconstruction. With the B, is a build route two, two operation. And uh, the rule Y anastomosis is pictured with C. You will uh, learn about this later on with your uh, surgical curriculum. Uh, then, if you have to cut away the whole colon, uh, the whole colon, uh, then you have to make a reconstruction uh, because uh, uh, a life without the function of the stomach is really difficult. Those patients are losing a lot of weight, so the quality of the life won't be the same as before. So uh, you have to do everything to reconstruct somehow uh, uh, or augment somehow the loss of the stomach. This is a picture which is uh, uh, showing uh, uh, the smaller curvature tumor uh, shown on the top of the picture. And uh, it, this is a total gastrectomy, uh, total stomach removal with the uh, omentum minus as well. Oncologically, you have to do it as well. Then, uh, to show you some uh, in more interesting pictures. Uh, these are uh, x-ray pictures on the left. This is not an x-ray, of course, this is an open surgery uh, picture. But on the right, uh, uh, you see uh, the uh, x-ray pictures of patients who are uh, by accident or on purpose are swallowing uh, some metallic parts, like uh, in the middle, a key which happens quite often with some children. Uh, on the left, you see a spoon, uh, which uh, sometimes uh, lands in the stomach. Uh, we have a lady in the surrounding in page who uh, has this strange hobby that she's swall swallowing spoons, which uh, uh, can be uh, removed uh, endoscopically sometimes, but the patient has, as she's having this strange hobby, See, she will probably swallow the next one on the next day. So sometimes you don't have to do with it. Uh, and on the right one, uh, there is a picture of a razor blade. Sometimes uh, uh, anybody who is usually uh, in, in jail uh, or the patients who are in jail and want to have some holiday out of the jail, they sometimes uh, swallow a razor blade and uh, this uh, threatening condition brings them to a hospital, to a uh, better surrounding maybe, but they are wise enough to tape around the sharp edge of the razor blade, so it won't do any damage. Uh, sometimes uh, they need some uh, stomach surgery too. If we go to the spleen, this is our next step, next organ, uh, I have to uh, uh, alarm you that uh, there are some branches of the splenic artery going not only to the spleen, but uh, they have some branches to the stomach, uh, like the gastric uh, brevis, uh, rami, and the pancreas, and the greater curvature uh, of the stomach, too. So please uh, be wise and uh, uh, during an exam, you have to mention those uh, arteries as well. Because just imagine if a spleen, which is a parenchymic, uh, very well uh, supplied, blood supplied uh, organ, if uh, the spleen has a damage, uh, then it can bleed a lot. Uh, and uh, if you have to do a surgery urgently, uh, then uh, as fast as you can, you have to uh, stop the bleeding and remove the spleen uh, during that surgery. But if you are uh, not aware of those branches which go to the uh, pancreas or the stomach, you might do a secondary uh, complication afterwards, and there could be a necrosis of the pancreas or the stomach or both of them, causing a life-threatening post-operative uh, situation. Just imagine that you save the life uh, of the patient and then you cause a life-threatening uh, second uh, complication afterwards. So please be aware that uh, from the splenic artery, there are branches to the stomach and the pancreas too.
the clinical importance of uh, it and of the actually the uh, the damage of the spleen is shown on these pictures in the middle you see uh, the the spleen uh, there is this blackish arrow which shows a particular uh, middle part of it with some uh, 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 darker gray line in the middle this is blood this is blood around the spleen and uh, on this ct picture you see that uh, there is a rupture of the of the spleen and that's why in the parenchyma you, you see this bleeding um, then this case is uh, uh, is a case for acute surgery uh, and uh, i have to mention a second type of of uh, injury to the spleen which is a two step injury in uh, some particular cases uh, if uh, somebody has a blunt injury in the abdominal cavity, this uh, spleen can start to bleed. The parenchyma uh, could be teared, and then the bleeding starts. But if the outer capsule of the um, spleen is still intact, then uh, the bleeding starts, but then the outer capsule makes a tamponade and it won't bleed anymore. So the patient has having a blunt injury, they have, uh, or the patient is having a pain around the splenic area, but there is no sign of any big blood loss. And uh, so the, the, real, uh, the real clinical condition uh, can be hidden, but if a second, sometimes just a small injury happens, then this auto capsule might rupture, and then a severe uh, life-threatening bleeding can start. And in this condition, in the patient is rushed to the hospital, and if you have uh, still time to open the abdominal cavity, uh, it's really a heavy bleeding. And uh, even though there is a heavy bleeding and you are uh, in an absolute um, uh, hurry to stop the bleeding, you still have to pay attention to the small arteries which go to the uh, uh, pancreas and the stomach. If we go to uh, the liver, uh, the liver is almost the same as the spleen, but uh, it has a little more sophisticated uh, blood supply. It has a big uh, uh, common, common hepatic artery, which is then divided into two uh, sides, the left and the right side, uh, which is, um, the blood supply according to the lo two lobes of the liver. Uh, the blood supply is massive. Uh, it needs a lot of uh, blood as well because the liver is a very active part of the body. Uh, during a liver surgery, if you find a tumor, if we have to, some kind of, uh, in some occasion, we have to resect, we have to take out uh, the part of the liver, and uh, we have a very good uh, uh, technique to, to uh, lower the complication intraoperatively, the bleeding complication, is that uh, we prepare the ligamentum hepatodenale in front of the surgery in the first measure of the operation, and we put a ligation around it. Uh, then we stop the arterial blood supply of the, of the liver, and then we can do the surgery with much less blood loss than uh, without of this maneuver, which is called the Baron maneuver. Uh, but if we do a surgery for 15 minutes uh, with, this, uh, with this ligation, then afterwards we have to give back the blood supply for five minutes. So we can operate for uh, 15 minutes, then five minutes reperfusion comes. And uh, this sequence is then continued sometimes uh, for uh, hours. That's how we can uh, avoid the big blood loss during surgery. This um, two-sided blood supply in the liver can be used uh, in uh, the transplantation surgery too. We can resect in the middle, in, in the middle of the two lobes, uh, the two parts, and uh, 
you can use it for transplantation in two different recipients. So one donor can have then two recipients. Uh, that's one which is, uh, of course, again, uh, to mention, if you have a tumor operation, then you can uh, reject the tumor. You can take away uh, a part of so a tumor in one lobe by the resection of it, and still the other lobe, which is an anatomical unit, can uh, remain in place. The pancreas, I will turn back to this uh, a little later as well. In, uh, the pancreas is a really sensitive organ. During the surgery, you should avoid touching it, even touching it, because it can lead to a postoperative edema and then a necrosis of the pancreas. But uh, I have to uh, uh, wake your attention that uh, the head of the pancreas, which is often um, has uh, some uh, tumorous uh, disease, the pancreas has uh, arterial blood supply from two different, or actually three different directions, from the celiac trunk and from the uh, superior mesenteric artery. And uh, don't forget that the tail of the pancreas can get some branches from the splenic artery as well. The superior mesenteric artery, uh, again, an important uh, um, job and, uh, and task to remember that it's not going only to the small intestines. Please be aware that uh, uh, the distal part of the uh, superior mesenteric artery is supplying the uh, the large bowel uh, till the middle of it. So the colica dextra and the colica media is going to the large bowel as well. So if you have a closure of it, it won't affect just the small intestine, but, but partly the large intestine are, all, uh, are also affected uh, if uh, there is no blood supply. The inferior mesenteric artery takes the job from uh, the descending colon to the upper part of the rectum. So the clinical importance. This is an endoscopic picture of the of an esophageal uh, tumor. And uh, it's a quite large, on the right lower picture, you see a quite extensive uh, tumor. Uh, and it's an interesting thing that uh, you can live without several organs, but you cannot live without the esophagus. If uh, you can uh, uh, eat and swallow your food, then uh, it is uh, not a long lasting uh, condition. And uh, somehow we surgically uh, trying always to replace uh, the esophagus if uh, we reject it. Uh, if we reject, we have to make some augmentation later on. And the easiest way to do so in the most common organ which is used is, uh, is the, the stomach. Out of the stomach, we can uh, do a tubular organ. And uh, that's why we can do it. And that's why we can pull it up to the neck until the origin of the uh, esophagus, because it has a very good blood supply and the network of arteries. And that's why we can give, uh, we can leave the, the uh, distal arteries of the stomach and we can form a tubular organ uh, out of the stomach and we can pull it up to the neck. We can use the small intestine as well as a replacement for the uh, esophagus. We pull the small intestine uh, on the surface, on the uh, outside the patient, and with the backlight, uh, the arteries and the vessels are visible in the mesenterium. And if you cut in the very special positions those arteries which are supplying the small intestine, you can make a long segment out of the, uh, the small intestine, you can pull it up to the neck. Uh, interestingly, uh, there are not uh, very good results, uh, results with a long uh, augmentation of the, of the esophagus with a jejunal segment uh, or a general jejunal replacement. Uh, 
we rather use it uh, for a segmental replacement of the esophagus. Means that uh, we cut away and um, segmental artery and segmental vein of the small intestine, and this is uh, uh, then transferred to the neck as a free jejunal autograft. This is a picture of how we do it. You see uh, uh, a small bowel segment, and uh, in the root down there is the uh, artery and the vessel and the vein already prepared for uh, the transplantation. Then uh, on the next picture, you see the small bowel on the neck with uh, those tiny, really precise uh, anastomosis between the artery and the vein of the neck. And then the blood supply of the jejunal segment is uh, okay, and then the patient can swallow through the small bowel. What happens if uh, the unpaired branches of the uh, aorta uh, are closed? It happens uh, quite often uh, in an arter atherosclerotic plaque can be an origin for a closure or uh, if the patient is, have, uh, is having some coagulopathy, then these vessels uh, can be occluded. Let's see what happens if they are occluded. If the celiac trunk is uh, occluded in an acute way, so uh, in an acute situation, then uh, it's usually a fatal complication because in 30, 40 minutes, all those vessels uh, are not working anymore and all the uh, organs, uh, the liver, the pancreas, uh, the, uh, the spleen is then uh, hypoxic and they start to become necrotic quite fast. And in 30, 40 minutes, uh, there are irreversible uh, damages in the abdominal cavity. Of course, if the patient is uh, transferred to the hospital in a very fast track, and we can do a surgery or the uh, general surgeons with some muscular surgeons can enter the abdominal cavity and they can somehow replace the blood supply of those uh, organs and the patient can be saved. But uh, in most of the cases, uh, it's, um, it's a deadly uh, condition. If we have a chronic occlusion, on the other hand, a patient is uh, reporting some pain following the meals. But if there is a more need of uh, blood in the abdominal cavity, and because of the narrowing of those vessels, it won't get to the abdominal cavity, then it uh, is causing some ischemia, and ischemia uh, comes always in a picture of pain uh, on the surface. So uh, if uh, a patient is having a chronic occlusion, of course, uh, they are a much better candidate for an uh, arterial replacement or uh, so-called bypass surgery when we actually bypass the occluded um, area. If the mesenteric artery, the superior mesenteric artery is occluded on the left side, uh, if you have uh, the, the main branch is occluded, then you see that uh, all the small bowel and uh, half of the large bowel is dead, it becomes necrotic. And uh, in case of a uh, uh, main branch occlusion, superior artery main branch occlusion, occlusion we cannot save the patient's life. You cannot live without a small bowel and part of the large bowel. Those patients are sadly um, uh, you know, in, in the way of that. And um, we give those patients painkillers after surgery, and we are waiting uh, until the necrosis gets uh, to the state where the patient dies. Actually, in those cases, we cannot perform anything else. On the other hand, which is on the right side of the picture, if uh, only some segmental arteries are occluded, then of course we can resect those uh, part from the small bowel, and we can replace, uh, and we can suture together the remaining uh, small bowel parts or large bowel parts, and the patient's life can be saved. On those pictures, and these pictures, 
you see some uh, angiographic uh, pictures. Um, on the left, you see in the upper picture, you see a, a nicely, uh, a widely uh, demonstrated artery, mesenteric superior artery. And in the lower picture, you see it if it's closed. And you don't see this whitish stripe, meaning there is no uh, blood flow in this area. On the right, uh, double picture with this reddish arrow, you see the uh, small area where the occlusion uh, occurs. On the 3D reconstruction, it's much more visible that there is no connection between the two ends of the, the arteries. There is no uh, blood flow through this area. This is an intraoperative picture. On the lower right picture, you see how blackish and uh, uh, a vowel can be, which is already a sign of necrosis. There are some important arterial anastomosis in the abdominal cavity I have to mention. Uh, these uh, connections between uh, the arteries are really important and can help us surgeons to perform surgeries, uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, unplanable if you don't have those uh, connection between the arteries. The first one is the uh, Riolan ar arcade, which is a connection between the superior and the inferior mesenteric artery. The arcus riolani, as you see it uh, in a much better picture, is a connection between the uh, uh, media colic artery and the left colic artery. And uh, um, this uh, reddish sphere uh, shows you where the connection is. It's all around the uh, spleen on the, uh, the splenic curvature of the, of the colon. How can we use it surgeons uh, for, our, for our surgeries? That um, you can ligate in uh, some particular cases, all the mesenteric arterial branches, uh, which are so shown with those uh, uh, tiny ligations on this picture. But the blood supply still remains because uh, uh, mesenteric superior mesenteric artery has got a good blood supply uh, through the arcus riolani. So we can make a long segment of uh, the large bowel. And uh, with this uh, large segment of the large bowel, we can replace again, for example, the esophagus. In some of the cases, this is the most uh, uh, commonly used version of uh, the replacement for the esophagus. In some cases, this is the only surgery what we can do to replace the esophagus. With this condition and with this replacement, the patient can live uh, decades after surgery if uh, it was oncologically also successful. The SUDEC anastomosis, on the other hand, is a, a connection between the inferior mesenteric artery and the left um, uh, uh, artery of the, of the leg, the iliac artery. And uh, this connection makes it possible uh, that even if in, um, in, there is a closure of the left iliac artery, uh, this, um, if, if the, the occlusion is, uh, is at the beginning of the iliac artery, when it's usually uh, we find uh, uh, the occlusion there, then the leg can actually steal some blood through this uh, SUDEC anastomosis through the inferior mesenteric artery. This is a, a typical sign when the patient is having some uh, left lower abdominal pain if uh, the patient is walking on the, on the leg and the leg needs more uh, oxygen, more uh, blood, then uh, this uh, request is supplied through this SUDEC anastomosis. The patient is uh, having consequently uh, some uh, left abdominal pain. Uh, <clears throat> um, 
a city, an uh, NGO city, where we can uh, have the picture, the, the precise picture of the uh, blood supply of the lab can show us what is uh, in behind and sometimes that's how we find the closed arter arterial supply in the iliac heart. Uh, this is how an ischemic uh, conclusion uh, complication can occur due to this uh, stomosis. And there is a third one, uh, pancreatic organelles, uh, which are already mentioned by the pancreas, which is a celiac uh, trunk and uh, superior mesenteric artery uh, connection. If you want to do surgery on the head of the pancreas, you have to be aware and ligate from the tools that to, from two uh, different directions. That's how you avoid postoperative uh, uh, bleeding. Okay, that's for the arteries, and I have to rush now first uh, or, or secondly to the veins of the abdominal uh, cavity. Uh, the most important thing, what I have to uh, keep the, uh, uh, make the attention is that uh, we have two systems of veins in the abdominal cavity. There is a cover part which collects the venous blood from the pair branches uh, and some liver veins, of course. Uh, and on the other hand, we have the portal system. The portal system collects um, the blood from most of the intra-abdominal organs. And uh, that's why it is a little bit even more important for a surgeon than the caval vein, which uh, collects the blood from the abdominal wall and the pad um, branches in the abdominal cavity. Uh, the importance of the venous network is that uh, everything is flowing down uh, to the liver, but if the liver cannot accept enough blood or cannot filtrate enough blood because of some viral infection or uh, if the patient uh, is a heavy drinker and uh, is having a, a fatty transformation of the liver and the liver cannot accept as much blood as it should be. So there are going to be a traffic jam in the uh, portal veins and uh, then the portal vein gets enlarged and all the networks which is in between the portal network and the cable network will be enlarged. Where are those? Uh, there are some uh, interesting uh, uh, connection between the two system around the cardia. So the, the proximal part of the stomach and distal part of the esophagus. And uh, there will be an enlargement of those small, tiny veins. They, are, uh, they can become quite varicose, so they can double or triple their uh, diameter what it should be. Then uh, uh, you see it on the right side of this picture. So uh, around the stomach, you have those uh, venous network then you can have it around the umbilicus on the abdominal wall. And there is a third one around the rectum. So all those veins are enlarged if uh, the patient is having a, a not well functioning uh, liver. But uh, why it is important? Because all those um, enlarged veins are really subjected to major bleedings especially around the esophagus, if the patient is, if they have uh, these enlarged veins, and the patient is eating something which has a sharp edge, uh, fish bones or chicken bone, which is uh, really sharp, it can actually cut those vessels and it can lead to a life-threatening major uh, uh, bleeding. This is how it looks. You see that uh, these uh, varicose veins around the esophagus, they are really subjected to some physical injury. And uh, if you've seen any horror movie, if the patient, if the, if the actors are splitting blood, please triple the amount if uh, what you ever saw. It's a really uh, frightening situ situation 
and the patient can really die in some minutes if uh, those veins are bleeding. So you have to be aware, if somebody is having a bad liver, that's, uh, that's a complication afterwards. Uh, previously, there was a solution that the surgeons, uh, uh, they, they made the bypass, they had, uh, they had a, a, um, a surgery when we transferred the portal vein into the cover vein. And then we thought that that's going to be a solution. But uh, today is already a forbidden type of uh, surgery, so please don't do it. Uh, because uh, if you uh, um, lead the venous blood into the caval vein, you can even uh, lower the uh, perfusion of the liver and your problem will be multiplied than without this. So in these cases, you have to follow a conservative treatment this won't be a surgical one, only if the bleeding is major and you have to stop it somehow immediately. Okay, so for your attention, that uh, uh, was the lecture I wanted to tell you. If you have any questions, then I'm trying to answer it.